Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. Like always, my name is Mariah Roders, and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. What's up, guys? Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. We're doing yeah. well. So today we have a special episode. It's just going to be Morgan and I, brother and sister duo, and we are going to be talking about salvation and stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we are. So Morgan, would you like to pray for us? Yeah, let's pray. Dearly Father, thank you so much uh, for this day and for this time. I know um, when it's airing, it's probably nighttime, but thank you for meeting us here. And we just pray um, as we talk, as we talk about, like I said, salvation <laughs> and stuff, that we would really um, be serious about it because it is a serious matter. There's people going to hell, and without you, we are all going to hell. And so I pray, Father, that that won't be our message just to make people fear to to love you that's not the that's not the point but i pray father that we would see that we are in such need of a savior and you aren't just someone to save us but you're also a father and so i thank you god that you love us thank you that you care for us thank you that it's your will that none may perish and so i just pray father that you put a passion within us to love those around us and love strangers even our enemies, God. I pray that, um, I think the the guy from Salvation Army, he said that he said he prayed for all the people under him to hang over hell to see just their, that, that they wouldn't even want their worst enemy to go to hell. And so I just pray, Father, that we would have those hearts for people, that we would long for people to have a relationship with you. And so I just pray that you would teach us how to uh, cultivate that relationship. And we know it's not in our own strength, but we do still have to partner. There's a balance. And so we just pray, Father, that as we talk about these things today, that you be with us, that you be guiding us, that you be leading us, Father. And thank you for everyone that's tuning in. Please bless them and refresh them. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I say, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. So what, like I said, we're going to be talking about salvation and stuff. But when I was saying that, I wanted to say and stuff because we are going to be talking about the good news, the gospel, how to be saved and what it means to be saved. That you can't just say, oh, I said a prayer, so I'm saved. So I can just now live however I want to live. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. what it means to abide, what it means to get accountability, go to church, all these things to read your Bible, pray. So we're going to share all those things with you, but also we're just excited because we know that there's craziness going around the world and all these things and you're hearing all the bad news and there is a lot of bad news out there and stuff, but um, there is good news. There is good mm -hmm. news, Morgan. So what is the gospel? What does it mean that we have the gospel, the good news? What is the good news? Hmm. The good news is that, well, first of all, if you take through the Romans road, mm -hmm. uh, the first verse is Romans 3.23, mm -hmm. for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, so we need to, before we can appreciate the good news, mm. we need to understand the bad news, right? Yeah. And, you know, you see people on the street corner sometimes saying, oh, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. And that's true, but that's not really the, that's not really how you want to save people. And it might work for some people, but we need to come with hearts of compassion because we are all sinners. Amen. And it says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So first, that's the bad news. And we need to... If someone doesn't recognize that they're a sinner, mm -hmm. if they think they're a good person, yeah. then they're not going to think they need Jesus. Yep. And so, and the truth is that we are bad. The truth is that we're not good people. So that's that's when we're evangelizing. We like to, it's kind of like the Ray Comfort thing. We like to ask people, so do you think you're a good person? Mm -hmm. Because most people in the world think they're good. Yeah. and. Sadly, people compare themselves to people like Hitler, mm -hmm. and that's not who we're supposed to compare ourselves to. We are supposed to compare ourselves to God's standard, mm -hmm. not not human standards. So God's standard says that we're all sinners. So Amen. if you look at the Ten Commandments, and that's found in Exodus 20, uh, verses 1 through 26, mm -hmm. or Exodus 20, and then it's in Deuteronomy 5. So if you look at the Ten Commandments, yeah. Just those, you, you see that you broke probably most, if not all of them, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and people are like, what? I've never committed adultery. 
But committing adultery can be looking at a woman with lust even, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Because Jesus says it starts, you know, we know it starts in the heart. It starts mm-hmm. in the mind. And so, and even if you hated a brother or sister, mm-hmm. that's murder, right? Yep. And yeah, technically it's not murder in that, but in God's, God knows that that is a sin. Mm-hmm. And so that's according to his standard. So according to his standard, we're going to hell. And that's why we need a savior. Amen. Amen. And a lot of people also, another saying that you hear out there is follow your heart. (laughs) You're a good person and it's very new age. So you can go back and watch our episodes with Stephen Bancars, Doreen Virtue and all these people. And they explain like when they're in the new age, they thought they were good people. Mm. And there's a lot of people out there who also say they're Christian, but are in the new age and think they're good but it's like until we like morgan said until we can appreciate the true good news in the gospel Mm -hmm. of what jesus did for us we need to understand we're all sinners it doesn't matter because morgan and i you know we're pk pks Mm -hmm. pastor's kids we grew up in a christian home you know a lot of people say oh you guys were sheltered you weren't allowed to do this this and that and i am thankful for my parents because without that i we would have gone crazy and wild but you know what a lot of times I think, like Morgan said, we compare ourselves to the worst sinner. Mm. But Morgan and I, even though we haven't done all these big, wild sins, I love how Tim Hawkins says it. He's like, all these people have amazing testimonies. And he's like, sometimes it's like, I wish I was addicted to crack. (laughs) I was (laughs) like, no, we don't want that. We don't want to have Mm. this wild testimony so we can... But I'm, I'm thankful for, like, my dad's testimony. You can go back and watch that, too, his testimony and how he was, like, a drug addict and he was a womanizer or not and jesus saved him but for Mm -hmm. morgan and i you know we might think we're not that bad like we haven't done this this that but we need to realize that we're just as deserving deserving as hell like we all deserve hell Mm -hmm. and like it says in romans 3 10 no one is righteous no not one and jeremiah 17 9 through 10 the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things who can understand it I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. So Mm. we're all going to be judged. One day, we're all going to have to stand before God and every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we need to know that. We need to know that we are sinners no matter like if you feel like, oh, I've only lied and that's not bad. Well, Mm. that is a sin. Mm -hmm. So that's deserving as hell. Or if you're like, oh, I'm too far gone. You know, I've done this, this, this. God doesn't love me. You're not too far gone. Think of the Mm -hmm. thief on the cross. That's my encouragement for you today. The thief on the cross, he was like, can I want to be with you? You know what? And he was just like saying like, I'm totally, I'm doing the other one. What must I do to be (laughs) saved? But he's like, will you like, can I be with you in your kingdom? And he says, Mm -hmm. today you will be with me in paradise. So Mm -hmm. that act of faith. And even though he was a terrible, he didn't have to get baptized, right? He didn't have to go through all these things and these duties, but he just believed. And so we're going to talk about that. Um, We're going to get into the, so what Mm -hmm. we're going to do is we're going to go through the Romans road. We're going to share that. But then afterwards, um, we're going to talk about different practical tips and ways, you know, if you're feeling like, am I really saved or how Mm -hmm. do I walk out this Christian life in this dark world? What do I do? So I just want to encourage you. No matter if you're the worst sinner out there and you know that or you think you're good, know that Mm -hmm. no one is righteous. No, not one. We're all sinners. And if you think you're good, like that's see, that's the thing about like being a PK, like Mariah was saying, Um, you know, in the sense that you have all this good godly counsel around Mm -hmm. you. But then you start to get raised in the sense like, hey, wow, I I have lived a pretty good life. And that self-righteousness, you know, and I've dealt with that before. Mariah has that self-righteousness, I think it's almost more dangerous sometimes oh, yeah. than actually like big physical sins or something like that. Those are bad too, of course, but I think it's easier to repent of those things mm-hmm. because you can see it. People you know can that. see it. Yeah. And yeah, even if you hide it, but you know it's affecting you. Mm-hmm. It even affects people's bodies sometimes. But that hidden sin, yeah. that pride, that lust, that hatred, that bitterness inside of you, I think it's almost worse because you're putting on a show and you're hiding all this. And then, you know, it's Mm -hmm. very hard because you think, hey, look, I'm pretty good. And everyone says I'm good. But, you know, deep down, oh, yeah, I do these things. But it's not as bad as that person. And so we need to be careful. So if you if you believe that you're a good person or if you believe like, yeah, I've done some 
I've done some things. Yeah, I've, I've stolen, stole some stuff. Um, if you think, oh, that's, but, but when you compare it to someone who's killed someone mm. or someone who's done this or that, if you uh, compare like that at all, you're in a dangerous place. We, we should not compare ourselves to other people. Amen. So, and yeah. like Morgan was saying too, we need to understand what we're being saved from. Like mm-hmm. we're being saved from eternal, like separation from God and from in hell. A lot of times people, they have weird stuff where they think that hell is just for a small time and all that, but no, mm-hmm. just, or it's like, just in your mind or something. Yeah. But just like heaven is forever. Hell, a uh, separation from it is forever. And mm-hmm. so, so this is the next part of the Romans road. Romans six twenty three teaches us the consequences of our sin and says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And I love how it says Christ Jesus our Lord because during this time we're going to say that a lot because a lot of times people just make him Savior. They're so thankful, mm. like, thank you, God, for yeah. saving me from separation from you and, and from hell. But it's like we forget when we're here on this earth to make him the Lord of our lives, mm-hmm. to not just say, oh, thanks, God, and I'm going to do whatever I want, and I'm going to be the Lord of my life, or I'm going to you know, have other idols, and I'm going to love my spouse more than you or my children or my job or these hobbies or vacations or anything like that. We need to make Christ Jesus the Lord of our life. So we're going to talk about that a lot too. So remember that, but um, anything with that, Morgan, the Romans six twenty three. before we go to the next one. Yeah. I, I really like uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm. And I think that's a thing to, this is kind of a side note, but there are many um, so-called, well, religions, you know, that say, oh, Jesus was just a good teacher or he was uh, the brother of Lucifer or something like that. But no, Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't just a guy who became perfect and then became a God. He was always perfect and he always was God, right? And our brains can't can't handle that sometimes. Like when people say, oh, so was he 50% God, 50% man? No, he was 100% God. 100% 100% man and the mathematicians out there would be like no that's impossible that doesn't work <laughs> you know and if you try to the trinity and everything we try to put god in a box but we can't and so but we need to make sure that jesus is not just a savior or just mm-hmm. a good guy or just a good example yes he's he is all that but he's much more he is god he's amen. our heavenly father too so amen. I just wanted that. to say that that's yeah that's good so the next one is Romans 5, 8. Do you want to read that one, Morgan? Romans 5, Yeah, I got eight. right here. Um, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm. So it was even while we were still sinners, yeah. he died for us. So some people get that get this wrong. And, you know, even in Christianity, sometimes we think, oh, I've sinned really bad, so I have to pull away from church or I have to get my act together, get yeah. cleaned up before I come to God again. But that's not true. We're all sinners and we're always going to be sinners. And that's not an excuse that I'm not justifying sin or saying you can walk in blatant sin. We shouldn't be doing that. Mm-hmm. But we need to make sure that we come to the Father, that our sin doesn't keep us away from him. Our sin does that naturally. So instead of pulling away from God in that time, we need to press in. And we need the light to expose us, Amen. right? Amen. And so I think that's really, that's what I love about this verse so much is that even while we were still sinners, mm-hmm. he died for us. He didn't wait for us to become good enough mm. or less sinful, but he died for us even in the midst of our yeah. sin. Yeah. And I think that's the difference between um, Christianity and being a Christian, a Christ follower and all these other religions. It's like, you have to do this, do this, do that to be mm-hmm. saved. It's all duty. But with Christ, it's a gift. And it says that in Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. And it talks about, too, it's not of your own doing so that you can boast, so that you can say, oh, look what I've done. I've done this, this, this. I don't do this. I don't do that. And that's what you, when you can get caught up, especially for Morgan and I growing up, we can get caught up in, oh, I'm saved because of my good works. And that's mm-hmm. like the Mormons. <laughs> the Mormons, the Muslims, they have to do these things to be saved but it's done because of what christ has done for us like 
there's no more doing this now when we do these good things it's a proof that we are saved because we're so thankful we love him so much we fear him we don't want to hurt his heart because he's dwelling and living inside of us the holy spirit so we'll talk about that more the holy spirit but i love that when it says that while we were we're still sinners like morgan was saying because like to the day we die we're gonna there's gonna be sins we're struggling with and Christ is going to continue to sanctify us. And I love that too. It's a gift. So it's our choice, right? We're not robots. He doesn't force it upon us to choose and accept that gift, that gift of eternal life in heaven with him forever. And so the next one, do you have anything else with? Yeah. Well, that one? that's the good news, right? Yeah. That, that well, he saved sinners. us. He died for us mm-hmm. even in the midst of sin. So the bad news is we're sinners. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to hell. But the good news is we don't have to go to hell anymore because of God. But the key is we need to accept that. It's the, it's kind of like a garment. The garment is for everyone, but we actually have to make sure to put it on, right? Yep. And it's not, again, it's not our own strength or us having salvation. Yeah. It comes from God. But we do have to accept that free mm-hmm. gift. And it's not just like yeah. a prayer we pray because we're going to we're going to walk you through the prayer of salvation at the end. But you're not saved because you said a prayer at camp mm-hmm. one time. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think a lot of people think that, oh, I think they're saved. But then their fruit and how they're living is completely not a Christ follower. They're not following after Christ and says um, by their fruits, you will know them. And so. If someone's calling themselves a Christian, um, I think back in 2006, the Pew Research, um, they were saying that 83% of people in America said that they're Christians. So, But now in 2019, which I'm like, I don't know if this is a good thing or bad thing, but I think it's only, it says 60% or 63%. So it dropped down a lot. So a lot more people, they're not saying they're Christian, but they're saying, you know, they're in the new age or all this stuff. So they're kind of like, they know they're, they can't call themselves a Christian, but like they kind of still want to associate as that. And so for us, I think what we're realizing is there's going to be a lot of people who are deceivers who are saying, oh, yeah, I've accepted that. I've said the prayer, but just be careful. And we're going to talk about that, too. Be careful of those who can say, you can live like this as a Christian. You can do mm-hmm. this. Did God really say that? And that's why we need mm-hmm. accountability. We need the church. We need to be in our word. We need to be reading the Bible. And so... For God's word, not ours. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Did I say that? Oops. <laughs> no, you, you're just Blasphemy. joking. You're saying like <laughs> just our Bibles, but it's Read God's word, the yeah. holy word of God, <laughs> not my you. word. Because <laughs> my word, see right now, don't listen to what I'm saying. I pray that everything I say is from the Holy Spirit. Because mm-hmm. if I'm saying anything that's not of God... That's not good, but pray that during this time, we just give you a ton of scripture because that's Mm -hmm. the thing that we need to be rooted in is the word of God. And here at Calvary and not just Calvary, but like us as a church, we really believe that we're supposed to be in the word, how important the word of God that is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And so we're supposed to go by the word, but also the Holy Spirit, they They're not like, oh, I love the word better than the Holy Spirit. That It like goes hand in hand. And so we can't even read the word without the Holy Spirit guiding us and speaking to us. So we're going to talk about those two also. Mm -hmm. But the next part is Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this one is explaining what he did for us, right? And so we have to confess that we have to believe. So confessing isn't just like, oh, God is Jesus is Lord. And I I said it, so I must be a Christian. No, the point of it is in faith. Like we have Mm. faith and we believe. So it's that belief is putting like everything, like all of our eggs in that basket. We believe without a doubt that Jesus Christ, first of all, is Lord. So a lot of times people have weird stuff with like the Trinity and all that. But um, our modalism and all this stuff. But Jesus Christ is Lord, right? He is. So there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're not like in different, like a lot of people say different elements. Like, oh, God is this now, and then he's this and that. Like a lot of times people want to understand the Trinity and understand that. And until I can understand it, I'm not going to be a Christian. But it's like, that's faith. It's like mm-hmm. we don't understand it fully, but we believe in faith that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our heart that God raised his son Jesus, right? He He sent his one and only son to die for us. He 
then raised Jesus from the dead. And when we believe that, we will be saved. And Mm -hmm. so can you explain, Morgan, like a lot of people are out there, but like, why is that so important? Like, why do I need to believe that? Like, what's important about that? Yeah. Well, because, um, well, first of all, there's there are a lot of people who say, oh, God's dead, you know, mm-hmm. atheists and mm-hmm. stuff. But um, God's alive. So but he did die for us. There yeah. was a sacrifice. So God isn't unjust. He didn't just pardon our sins. Like, oh, you guys are sinners. Oh, whatever. Like, come to heaven. Mm-hmm. No, there's a sacrifice. Yep. He sacrificed his only begotten son. Amen. You guys, probably everyone, even non-believers know John three sixteen, right? Yep. Was that same, right? You got to memorize, right? John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, not just some, but whoever believes in him mm-hmm. will not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. And then I wanted to say this really yeah, quickly. <laughs> Sometimes people always say they're like, or this one person, he was saying, yeah, like my favorite verse is John sixteen three, And it <laughs> says, and they will do these things because they have not known the father nor me. So we don't want that. We don't yeah. want John sixteen three where we don't know the father and the father doesn't doesn't know us so we're gonna be talking about it later so don't intimacy say, don't say that's your favorite verse no john three sixteen can be but <laughs> not that okay, sorry um where was that so yeah jesus so jesus died for us so the sacrifice was made for our sin all our sin was put upon him mm-hmm. and i kind of want to go back real quick to why we need a savior mm. because I, we kind of went over that real fast, but we need to really know that we are bad. Yeah. We really need to know that there is n- none good. No, not one, no right? One righteous. And just just read that. Read the beginning of Romans. It just shows you the sinfulness of man and how much we need a Savior. And it says, let every man be a liar, but, but God be true, right? Mm-hmm. And I think of that because sometimes we put our hope in pastors. Sometimes we put our hope in friends or our faith might be our parents' faith, but we need to just put our hope in God because people are going to fail us. People are sinners. People are evil. And so I, we need to make sure, because if you're thinking that you can do this life, you can get by and you can talk to God, like say, hey, God, hey, you, you know, I was really, I had good intentions or I had a good heart or good motives. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's kind of like this guy, he was talking about, uh, he called it a game called Jumping to Catalina because from Santa Monica, California, I believe that about 15, 20 miles across the Pacific, there's Catalina Island. So people would play this game, like jumping out to Catalina to see how far they could go. And no one could jump there, right? It's impossible. It's silly. But that's kind of how we are when we try to get to God by our good works. Mm-hmm. Or we some, some people might jump further. But the further you you jump, the wetter you get, right? You have to swim back to shore. And so it's not worth it. And another pastor is saying, hey, if you are living for this world, you better go all out. You better eat, drink, be merry, get, you know, sin as much as you can because you're going to have nothing outside of this life. And he's 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 saying that, but he doesn't he's not meaning that he's saying, really, you need a savior because this is the best is going to be for us as sinners apart from God. But with Christ, this is the worst is going to be for us. And it only gets better from here, from here on out for us Christians. So, but you asked me how, why we need Jesus, right? Why yeah. we need that sacrifice. And also if, so he died for our sins, but if he just continued to stay dead, then there's, it doesn't really show victory over sin and death. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, great. Our Savior's dead. Mm. But he rose again. He, you know, he he conquered over sin and death, like we said. He didn't just die and like, oh, man, he's defeated. Our sin killed him. Mm. But no, he rose above that. And that just shows the greatness of God yeah. because we can't raise ourselves, right? It's Mm-mm. only the power of God. So, that's why the resurrection is important because without that, Christianity falls apart without the resurrection. And that's why the case for Christ and different things like that, if you if you disprove the resurrection, then everything yeah. crumbles. Everything yeah. is gone. So Yeah, and yeah. I think another reason why we need to believe that is because we need to understand that God is all powerful. Like we aren't mm-hmm. little gods. Like I think when people think oh, I'm a Christian, like I'm a little Christ, I'm a little God. That is so new age and mm-hmm. so messed up. No, we 
apart from Christ, we can do nothing. And even with Christ, like we can do all things, but we're not Christ. Only God is powerful. Only God can do all things. Only God, right? Like his spirit raised Christ from the dead and that spirit lives inside of us. So people are like, oh, then, you know, we're like God. No, his spirit lives inside of us. God lives inside of us, like the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And so I think that when we believe that God raised him from the dead and and understand that it's it's giving glory and honor to whom glory is due. Like mm-hmm. all glory and honor is to God that he can do that, that he conquered sin and death because he loves us, right? When we say and quote John three sixteen, we kind of just say it really fast. But for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Like think of that, his only son. That was painful. Like in the garden mm-hmm. when Jesus was like, can we like have this cup pass? And and He kn- we know that God said no. And he said, not my will, God, but your will be done. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we see. We see that it wasn't easy. Literally every sin you can think of, all the gross, mm-hmm. nasty sins of rape, um, you know, murder, all these things were put, literally he was immersed in that sin mm-hmm. and he was, and all the he sins was separated. In the past, yeah. The present and the sins He to took come, care of all them of all. And he, and that's why it's just crazy. Like by his stripes, we are healed. Mm-hmm. Like it's only by the blood of the lamb, but the blood of Jesus, that sacrifice, that pure spotless lamb that can save us and that mm-hmm. has saved us. And I think a lot of times people are like, well, it's only for some people. He only chooses some. It's available to anyone. If you're out there right now, it's available to you. And you might think, like we said before, I'm too far gone. No, you're not. The thief on the cross, you're not too far gone. You're not too far gone. Today is the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people and remind them today is a day to wake up and realize that apart from Christ, you can do nothing and that you're going to be in eternity apart from him and people think hell you know is just like i said not a long time and yeah it's kind of you know hot and fire and flames but it's like it isn't you can't even imagine how terrible the torture is and it's forever and ever and ever torture the worm is never satisfied your body's being eaten burned um you're hearing demons and things like telling you oh you were so close you had a chance like forever but people but don't want to hear that anymore. they don't they so don't want to hear change that. the gospel yep you can't change the truth the truth is set right god's word is true it, i like what someone said uh i might mess it up but basically the bible doesn't talk just talk about truth the bible is truth, is truth. god's word is truth. truth and we can't say oh hell's hell's not really real or hell's only for a little bit. Mm-mm. We can't if we soften hell. That doesn't do any any good because we can't change the truth. And so that's why it's so important to to hear the gospel. That's why we're sharing it with mm-hmm. you now. The good news is because we want. Yeah, we all need the good news. It's for me. It's from Raya. It's for you guys watching. It's for the person who you think is the holiest here on earth. It's for them too, because apart from God, they're dead in sin. But now in Christ. Um, like Romans 8, 1 said, mm-hmm. it says, there is therefore now no condemnation Amen. for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you're in Christ Jesus, there's no more condemnation. And we're going to see if you really are in Christ Jesus, because we got to check ourselves. Like Mariah said, it's not just something you pray about one time and then, mm-hmm. hey, I'm saved. Yes, it says to the next verse where we're going to read uh, 10, Five, one. 10 what? Let me see. 10, 13? Yeah, 10, 13. It says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And people have abused this. You know, there's there's people who say, Hey, I'm a Christian. I call I called upon the name of the Lord. So, hey, I'm saved. But that really means to believe Amen. in the Lord. It's Amen. not just saying, Hey, Jesus, save me. No, it's like we need to put our full hearts into it. And so we're going to look at that. I don't know. I, I think th- we already I might went have through skipped that. some stuff. I think no, we but we're going to look at how we can truly walk in that, mm, how we can amen. truly know that we are saved. Yeah. Right? And it's a peace, a peace mm-hmm. of God, right? That we can believe that. So that is Romans 5 1. Therefore, since we have been justified, right? Just as if we have never sinned because Christ died for us, which is crazy to think of, justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. And so 
because of our relationship with Christ now. So what happened was when Jesus died for us, the veil was torn. So that veil before the priest only could go there. Like they had to make sure they killed right all these spotless lambs and like did all these sacrifices, a lot of bloodshed. But when Jesus died, he said it is finished. And that was it. There was no more, you know how Catholics go to a priest and they have to only go through a priest. Now that's no more. We don't have mm-hmm. to go through a priest. We go to, we can go to Jesus mm-hmm. because uh, or to, we go yeah. to God because of Jesus. So we can talk to God through Jesus, what Jesus did mm-hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's yeah. the Trinity, yeah, the beautiful Jesus is our great thing. high priest. Mm-hmm. So we go to him. That's why Amen. we pray in Jesus name, right? Amen. And because yes, of what he's Jesus done. is God and stuff, but it's just saying because he's the last sacrifice. He's the perfect sacrifice. So now we don't have to slaughter a sheep every time <laughs> we ha- have lust in our hearts or Amen. anything like that. That would be pretty messy, pretty gory all the time. But now we get to just come to him and we and get repent. to come to him boldly. Yeah. Not with a not with like a cockiness mm-hmm. or anything, but the boldness because of his sacrifice. Of what he's done. And when Jesus sees us now, he sees the righteousness of Christ. Or when God sees us, right? He sees the righteousness of his son upon us. And we don't deserve that. And that's mm-hmm. why that's why this should bring us such joy. Amen. That we have we have such a such good news. And I think of I was just thinking about this picture of um the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, you know, the movie where, you know, Aslan they they thought, Hey, we killed we mm. killed him. Yep. Right? Yep. And they're rejoicing, the witch and all her minions and everything. <laughs> they're rejoicing. But then they realize like, oh, what? Like he's he Came rose, back. you know, like so they're they're terrified and they're like, what? This isn't right. And that's the conquering. That's the conquering over sin and death. I know that's just a, a silly movie, but it's a good picture. And I think we need those pictures sometimes to kind of help us. And that's really what happened. Like Amen. we don't have to we don't have to be terrified of the the witch you know of satan mm, but we can walk in boldness and confidence in yeah. christ yeah. And that's the next thing in romans um romans 8 38 through 39 for i'm convinced that neither death nor life mm-hmm. neither angels it <laughs> <laughs> angels angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from Mm -hmm. the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So right there, like Morgan is saying, nothing can separate us. No sin, our, our past, anything that Satan is like, well, you did this and you're too far gone. And I can't believe you did that. And you should basically he's telling you, you should go on our side because Mm. You won't feel guilt and shame. And that's what people make you feel. Christians are the ones making you feel the guilt and shame. They're making you feel bad because, you know, you struggle or you are homosexual or because you're fornicating or because um, you've had an abortion. They make you feel bad. It's condemnation. And it's not condemnation. What you need to realize is that is conviction. I think a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm being condemned by Christians and they hate me. We don't hate you. God doesn't hate you because you are in mm-hmm. sin. He loves you. That's why he died for you. And you just have to accept that free gift and then walk in, in that yeah. freedom. And but I think a lot of times people are like, I just want to be saved so I can keep living in that lifestyle. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will want to be holy. You will want to read the Holy Bible, the Holy Word of God, and you will want to act upon it. It says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And so that's what we're going to talk about now is like Mm -hmm. being able to walk the walk and, you know, not just talk and say, I'm a Christian. I love God. And, but not, you know, live in that freedom. Cause that's why Mm -hmm. we sometimes say the sad thing of why a lot of people don't want to be Christians is because so many people claim to be a Christian and, you know, they're sleeping in or living with their boyfriend and girlfriend. They're slandering. They're gossiping. They are doing all these things and yet saying, oh, I love God. And, you mm-hmm. know, he loves me. And I'm, but they don't even read his word. They don't even, they're not even thankful for what he did on the cross. Because if you just watch the passion of the Christ, I encourage you. It's with Mel Gibson, but it's really good because it makes you realize that, oh my goodness, my sin is what nailed him on the cross. Don't blame the Jews. It's not the Jews that did that. No, it's all of us, all of our sin. We would, if I was, our sin, our sin, us, we're Christ killers. It's not, yeah, Mm -mm. it's not a certain people group 
it's all of us because we're all sinners. Amen. Like their very first verse of the Romans road, right? And the Romans road isn't something, it's like, <laughs> it's something that man made, right? Yeah. Like they just picked verses, but you see the gospels all through the Bible, Amen. even in the old Testament. Yep. I mean, Romans Isaiah. is, is a lot of the old Testament and new Testament, you know, lens kind of. And so you see, I mean, just John three sixteen. that's the gospel in that one verse. And you see, there's many verses where it's the gospel. So it's all about the gospel. But now, um, sometimes people say, hey, it's a free gift, but there still is a cost. You know, yep. it, we have to give up our flesh. There's still something we have to give up. Right. Amen. And Amen. so now we're, are we going to talk mm-hmm. about cost of discipleship? Yep. Luke oh, 14 verses 25 through 35. Um, I don't know if I'm going to read the whole thing. It's kind of long, but I'll, I'll start in verse mm-hmm. 25. Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. Verse 28. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build it and it was not finished. So, and then it explains more. But think about it. There's so many people, right? They fall away. They accept it, right? They think they say the prayer, but then you see them fall back and go back into the world. And people are like. because they just want savior. (laughs) Exactly. They just want a get out of hell free card. Yep. But God is much more than that. He. He doesn't, it's not just, hey, yeah, just get out of hell, but he Mm. wants a relationship with us. And we should be so excited about that. Sometimes we're excited about heaven, but really heaven is that relationship with Jesus. I I think that's even greater than, you know, how people say, oh, the mansions and stuff. Uh, We don't even know what that mansion is going to look like or what that's going to mean. But that relationship with the Father, just like Jesus that separation when he died for us it wasn't just the sins sometimes people think oh just the sin on him or the the beatings or the nails in his hands that was painful but the most painful thing most people think or believe is that separation from the father because he had never been separated from the father and so if that relationship is so important to Jesus and that's the that's the best thing then we should be so thankful for that relationship. We shouldn't just be looking uh, to Christianity or as just a religion or just to be free from hell, mm-hmm. but we should just desire that that relationship with God. And I think if when we truly love God for th- Him, you know, for Himself, not just for heaven or getting out of hell, then that will allow us to really count the cost and see that it's worth it. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then the next verse, uh, um, actually, I'm going to have you read this, Morgan. First John 3, 7 through 10. Do you have that? Yeah. A little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Mm-hmm. Verse 8. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Yep. Verse 9. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's uh, God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Verse 10, but this, by this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, um, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So you notice it says a practice of sinning. Yep. And like I said before, we're even in Christ, we still sin. We're still sinners. But think about that in your life. Is it a practice of sinning? Is it blatant sin? Are you, is it, some people say, oh, I'm struggling. But sometimes when they say that, they're not really struggling. They're just full on giving into it. Yeah. But if you're, if it's a struggle, you should be fighting it, right? You should be giving it to God and and getting accountability and everything like that because you don't want that to separate you, right? See, it says nothing can separate us from God, but we can choose to be separate from God in the sense that we choose our sin over him. So, Amen. And then another verse that I really like, um, well, verses, 
is First Corinthians six, where it talks about um, like different sins and stuff. Because I think a lot of times people are confused, like, wait, but what things am I not supposed to walk in? Like, I don't understand. And that's mm-hmm. why we're gonna encourage you to read your Bible. But um, mm-hmm. but also going with what you're saying is like to not make a practice of sinning. So it says First Corinthians six, and we're gonna start in nine. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, right? Because a lot of times we're deceived thinking, oh, I'm a good person. I'm not that bad, but we're all wicked. It mm-hmm. says neither the sexual, sexually immoral. So if se- the sexually immoral, a lot of times people don't realize fornicators. So if you are living with your boyfriend or girlfriend and sleeping with them and having sex or like if it talks about in second timothy 222 doing anything that arouses love before its time or anything that you Mm. know like that that you feel like oh i don't feel like this is good you know you wouldn't do that at church that that you a lot of times there's like sexual immorality that people are like well how far is too far and all this stuff and the fact Mm. that you're asking that you've already gone too Mm -hmm. far (laughs) like you need to be as close to god and being pure and holy try to push the boundaries or try to get as close to sin as you can yeah we'll do another episode on that talking about Mm -hmm. purity and what it what does it mean to like you know just getting accountability and help too because it isn't easy in this life but we're going to talk about that and that's why it's important to go to church and get accountability but sexually immoral nor idolaters What's an idolater, Morgan? I always say that mm. wrong, but idolater, yeah. So when we put anything before God, mm, anything. an idol, right? Yep. And it's not just like a, a a graven image. Yeah, that's an that could be an idol if you're putting that before God. But we're like, hey, I don't have any idols in my ho- house. You know, I don't worship my this plant or anything like that, right? But we do put idols, and it could be anything before family God, members. even like Luke even good things. Yeah, yeah. family members even. Um, our pastor, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this podcast, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if we put anything before God, and usually it's sin, right? It's our, um, like Mariah was saying, uh, maybe fornication. Maybe you're putting yeah. that before God. And the reason why you might be putting that, or you are putting that before God, if you're struggling with that, if you're in that, or blatantly in that, it's because God says not to do that. Mm-hmm. So you are putting that, that fornication, that sin before God. So that's an idol, right? Yeah, and it talks about that later. If you read the whole, I encourage you to read the whole chapter in First Corinthians 6. It talks about like you're joining yourself with Christ and you know mm-hmm. all that. But um, I'll go through it a little faster. But nor adult, uh, <laughs> adulterers, so the people who like, you know, cheat on their husband mm-hmm. or wife or that. Nor men who practice homosexuality, men or women, men or women, you know, homosexuals like whether you women with women men with men that Mm. is wrong that and a lot of times people say oh well jesus doesn't say it and all this stuff okay everything that's in the word of god is from god and so to say that oh i don't pick i pick and choose then you need to take out everything you need to take out Mm. salvation salvation (laughs) salvation too so they're just letting you know like homosexuality is a hard one for people to to understand because they're like oh like let them love who they want to and it's like but no even if it's not bad that that is bad and you know it also isn't right you know it it isn't it you know you get even sexual transmitted diseases and Mm -hmm. all these things from fornication and homosexuality and god's not doing that to like have us not have fun he's doing that protect us he loves us he knows what's best for us and we need to trust him and and, uh, it's wild i just i just heard this this week um some people are like well homosexuals that's not really in the bible they're like oh that that word came later but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if that word came later or or when it came the fact is that god says what in the old testament a man should not sleep with a man Amen. and Amen. and roman look if you look at romans 1 it doesn't say homosexuals but it says for this reason god gave them up to dishonorable passions mm. For their women exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And this is a, this is 126 and then 27. And men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. So we say this because we don't want people to continue in this because this these things are sin 
is not, is not going to allow us. If we continue blatantly in those things, then we are not of our father, God, or of, you know, if you're in that, you're of your father, the devil, right? You're following in your flesh and people think, Hey, now I'm not following the devil. I'm following my flesh. The kingdom of self is the kingdom of Satan because he, he loves self. That's why he fell, right? Because he wanted to be greater than God. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the next one says, uh, verse 10, nor thieves. And so you might think, well, I'm not like robbing banks. But mm. there's other times where we scam, you know, people, mm-hmm. um, they take like movies they shouldn't, like, um, and do different things of like taking something that's not theirs or coveting. Doesn't matter how small. Like even if you're yeah. coveting something your neighbor has, like that is wrong too. Um, nor the greedy. So many people are greedy. We always mm-hmm. like, I wish I had this and comparing yourself to others. Oh, if only I had this, then my life would be better. Greediness. Drunkards. That's a big one. A lot of times people are like, well, I can drink, but it says, I think it says it later too in verse 12, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. Not saying that you can't drink, but a lot of times that like the biggest stat that ruins marriages and families is alcohol abuse. And so just being mm-hmm. careful that, you know, you're not like, oh, I just feel a little buzz. Is that wrong? Is that too far? Like, don't yeah. like just try to stay away from that because drunkards, you know, if, if it's going to get you close that, to sin, mm-hmm, cut it off. Cut right? it off. Yeah. So if you're, you're if you're like, oh, yeah. I might not get drunk. Yeah. No, then yeah. don't do it. Right. Yeah. We're not supposed, it's crazy because we ask God to um, lead us far from temptation, but then we <laughs> dive into we it. Pur- purposely put ourselves in a bar around all this stuff. Go to you know, and yeah. And so we need to make sure that we're doing our part because God's not going to, you know, just force us from the things that we want to do. He gives us free will, right? And then the next one is um, nor revilers, nor swindlers. So revilers, um, right, Morgan, is that people who are just get really angry and like, um, mm. can you explain the definition? Like a reviler, someone who's like, I think they just are very um, criticized in an abuse or angrily insulting manner. So someone who reviles and it's like, I think it's also people who just like lose their temper and get mm. angry all the time. Well, you like think just of the Bible into talks about how the, the devil how anger gives a mighty foothold to the enemy, right? And and we th- try to think. You know, the Bible also says anger doesn't satisfy. You know the I think the righteousness of God or something. Sometimes we think, hey, we can get vindication or we can do these things. But sometimes, most of the time, we need to leave that up to God, and that's going to. We can't take justice into our own hands, so we need to be careful. Sometimes I've seen people say, "Hey, it's a righteous anger," and but really they're just saying that so that they can choose to be angry, mm-hmm. and so we need to be careful of that. And this also says a reviler is a person who uses words to damage, control, insult someone's character or reputation. Mm, so like a slander. way of it is slander, yeah. right? A lot of people are like, oh, I don't like I'm I'm just like I'm not gossiping because, you know, I'm just saying the truth. But if you're doing something to ruin someone's reputation, to make them look mm-hmm. bad, that's slander. So reviling. So there you go. Nor swindlers. So I think that's with money. Right, Morgan? That's mm-hmm. um, someone. It says. Use deception to deprive someone of money or possessions, um, fraudulent. So mm. deceptive, like deceitful people, like who scam people who are scamming people uh, for money and cheating people will not look at what it says will not inherit the kingdom of God. So mm-hmm. we just look at like a lot of people like the church only looks at homosexuality and don't pick on that. Well, we bring that up because. That's one that's praised. A lot of people don't praise people for being adulterer or praise people for fornicating. Um, kind of nowadays they do, but homosexuality is praised. Like you can be a homosexual Christian. That's wrong. So we're not like making it worse than these. Other, all these. It says all these sins. Like if you're blatantly walking in, like I don't care. This isn't wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, not inherit the kingdom of God. There's a whoops. There's a slip. There's a fall and confess and get right with God falling forward. But when you keep falling back and back and you're just lukewarm, like I go to church, but then I party hard on the weekends and I confess. It says in Revelation, it says you're either hot or cold. Like if you are lukewarm, he'll spit you out. So I'd rather you guys go back to the world and party hard and realize this world has nothing to offer you so that you are thankful for 
Christ and what he's done on the cross, you are thankful for him dying for your sins. You realize that this world has nothing to offer you, even though you think love is love and it feels good. Feelings are wrong. Feelings bring people to death. Mm -hmm. But this is why we need faith. And this is why we keep talking about that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I think it's Hebrews. Is it 11, 6 or 6, 11? 11, 6. 11, 1. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. But without faith, it's impossible to please oh, no. God. Yeah, yeah. And so how important that faith is in Christ, not faith in a person, not if you are single, not faith that, oh, if I get married, then my life will be good. Or, oh, if I went to these parties, if my parents let me go and if I didn't miss out, then my life would be good. And that fear of missing out, like we talked about in episode 38, it's wrong. We're not missing out. We get to be in eternity and have a party in heaven and a banquet with God forever. Well, there's no more pain, no more sin, death, anything like that, sorrow. And we get to like, like love God and love everyone around us. There's no marriage. So that's, people are all sad about that. It's beautiful. We all mm -hmm. get to love each other. We all get to. that means like the, our relationships with one another and so with good, God yeah. is so great Amen. that he even Amazing. surpasses marriage. And yeah, some people are in tough, tough relationships. Mm -hmm but it's going to be surpass even the best marriage here on earth. Amen. So Amen. that's, that's the way we got to think about it. And like I said, our brains can't wrap our, we can't wrap our minds <laughs> around that, but it's going to be great. Amen. And then this is the last verse. And we have this on our wall at our church, like on the thing in the sanctuary. And this is first Corinthians six eleven. And such were some of you, but you were washed, hmm. you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So because of God the Father sending his Son, Jesus dying on the cross, and now we walk it out. Because Jesus died, he gave us the Holy Spirit. We can walk it out now with the power of the Holy Spirit. So so many times people are like, but it's so hard to like not do this and give in. Yeah, in your own strength, it is impossible. It is impossible to not keep walking in that. But this is why I love Galatians 5.16. It says, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And it says such were some of you. You used to be a homosexual. You used to be an adulterer. You used to be a fornicator. You used to be a swindler or a violer. All these things. But you've been washed. You've been justified. And it's not saying you're not going to slip and go back to that. But you're falling forward at the feet of Christ. Mm -hmm. You're humbling yourself. You're admitting you need help. And you're admitting you need accountability too. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about that now. And what happened like, when, when Jesus mm -hmm. died and rose again? Yeah, he ascended into heaven, but he gave us the Holy Spirit. Yes, so yes. that's a, also a great thing. Because yes. if you're his disciple and you're like, what, Jesus, you're leaving? Mm -hmm. Like that would be devastating. But he says there's going to be... He's going to give us a helper. He's yep. going to give us something better because it's it's him basically. But now he he's in everyone's mm -hmm. hearts, right? Yeah. In everyone who believes. And so we need to make sure that we are walking with the Holy Spirit daily. That like the verse you always talk about, Psalm 139. Mm -hmm. We're asking God to search us, Amen. the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and to know us, to test us, see if there's any wicked way within us because there are wicked ways. Yep. And even sometimes there's things, like I said earlier, things that we don't even see, different areas of pride, self-righteousness. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those things Amen. to us because those things, our pride will kill us if yeah. we let it. Yeah. Because if we walk in this life in our own strength, a lot of times people don't believe in like hearing the voice of God. What does that mean? Read your word, like your word. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Read the Bible, the yeah. word of God. Read the Bible because the Bible has all the answers. All the, mm -hmm. It says, uh, Ronald Reagan, he has this quote. Ali Bustecki has it in her studio. It says, all the problems men face are in the covers of the Bible. So mm -hmm. the word of God gives us all the answers to the problems you face. And it encourages us. So if you ever feel lonely or depressed, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you always, even to the ends of the earth. And it says, like, um, he is for us, not against us. He's given us a purpose and a, a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. And if you seek me, you will find me when you search me with what? All your heart. Mm -hmm. If you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. Like there's so many beautiful promises that we just miss out on because we don't read the word of God and mm -hmm. we just kind of like do our own thing. And this is why Matthew 7, right? The typical depart from me. I never knew you. People get really afraid. They're like, oh, my goodness, am I going to go to hell? Like, am I not really saved? This is talking about religious people who think they're saved, right? Those people who say, didn't I do this? All these good works, mm -hmm. but don't just slow down, right? 
Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I'm God and let God speak to them. Like Morgan said, Psalm 139, 23 and 24, search me, O God, know my heart, test me, know my anxious thoughts, right? No one's anxious nowadays. Everyone mm-hmm. struggles with that. Know my anxious thoughts, see if there's any wicked way within me. Am I doing anything big or small? If, I, if I'm just, even if I'm speeding and God's like, I don't want you to go over the speed limit, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Know my heart, test me, know my anxious thoughts, wicked ways, see if there's any wicked way within me and then lead me right on the way of everlasting life. It's Mm -hmm. a walk with him. It's a John Mm -hmm. 15. We're going to talk about it's a continual abiding by the spirit, walking by the spirit, talking to him. I love that song is like, he walks with me. He talks with me a long life's merry Mm -hmm. way. It's an adventure. It's joyful. It's joyous when we get to walk by the spirit. So um, I'm just going to, or you can read that first. Yes. Read that. John 15, five. Um, There's a big portion of John 15 that's really good, but for time, I'll just read verse 5. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And who's talking here? Jesus, right? And God, you know, the Trinity, right? It's Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So... The question is, are you abiding? And Amen. some people are like, what does abide mean, right? Mm-hmm. But the, are you staying connected to God? Are you in the word of God? Are you praying? And the result of that will be fruit, the fruit of the spirit, which is in Galatians 5, right? So you can look that up. See, am I producing this? And is this coming naturally because I am in God's word? I am in fellowship. I am you know, praying and seeking him. And doing it with a sincere heart. So that's abiding, staying close to him. Amen. Yeah. That's good. I'm just going to read Matthew 7 really quick. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. 22. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do many mighty works in your name? Verse 23. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of mm-hmm. lawlessness. So that is always like a verse like dun, 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 like very scary to people. And it was scary to me because I so many times do things in my own strength, like try to be a good person still in Christ. And I try not to do this, try not to do that, go to church, do all these things instead of just like asking God, God, what do you want me to do today? Mm-hmm. What is your will for my life? Not my will, but your will be done. What do you want me to do? Because so many times if we compare ourselves to others and do what people Mm. tell us to do and fear people, we're trapped, like it says in Proverbs 29, 25. But when we trust God and know that his way is best, whether Mm. or not we're married, whether or not we have the job we think we need, whether or not we ever have kids, Mm. that God is in control. He knows it's best for us. And we trust that. Like, think about that. All the other religions, they're just religions. They're just, what can I do to get to God? Mm. Yeah, duty. And it's cliche, yeah. People say, oh, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. But that's true. It's a relationship. If you don't know the Father, if you're not spending time with Him, then your works are going to be unauthorized. Yeah, you you know, Mm -hmm. you could read the Bible and say, hey, oh, all I have to do is be good. I'd be a good person and do these things. Like, you can read the good things and you can try to uphold the Ten Commandments, but the law shows us that we're sinners Mm -hmm. and that in our own strength, we can't uphold the 10 commandments or even the 613 laws. And that's why we need a relationship with the father. And that's why we need to be listening to his voice. And we need the Holy spirit to lead us so that we know what to do Mm -hmm. because sometimes people do great things, but God hasn't called you to do that. That's not God's purpose for your life. And you guys might be shocked. Yeah. And you're like, but I'm doing so much good. How could this not be God's purpose? But the question is, have you really asked him? Yeah. Has he told you to do that? Mm-hmm. Or are you just doing it in your own strength? And that's that's the difference is that religion is man's attempt to seek God. But a relationship is different than that. And that's what we need. We Amen. need a relationship with God. And intimacy, like mm-hmm. it says, like I think it's the Greek or... The Greek or Hebrew of uh, gnoskos. Yeah. So that word no, depart from me, I never knew you. That word no is 
gnoskos intimacy like a man knows his wife Mm -hmm. like he knows her inside out he knows her that's how much we should know god and want to know him because why would you want to be in eternity i always say this to people with someone you don't even talk to Mm. that you barely know that you just run from and then you spend eternity with them on a honeymoon that's what heaven's gonna be (laughs) that's weird and that's why he says depart from me never knew you like Everything you're doing was your flesh and right. The kingdom of self is the kingdom of Satan. But when we're submitted to his well, it's like, God, I know nothing. I am weak. I am foolish. But you with you, when I abide in you and I just submit to you. And what does this all come down to? All of this is a broken, contrite spirit. The Lord will not despise. It's humility. It's um, talking about when it's like uh, James. I'll go there really quick. James 5. I'm um, 16. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power and it is working. So we, this is what we're going to talk about really quickly now is intimacy and relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ. And so this goes back to second Timothy two twenty two, my favorite verse. So flee youthful passions or run from anything that stimulates youthful lust, whether that be masturbation, pornography, any of that, flee run away mm-hmm. from that and pursue righteousness which is our only righteousness is found in christ mm-hmm. faith in christ jesus and who he is not in ourself love right we can only love god we can only love others with christ's love and if you love me you'll obey my commandments and peace right we have peace when we've accepted him and the holy spirit's inside of us um, it surpasses all understanding so along with those who call on the Lord of pure heart. So it's telling us that we need community. We need commitment. We need a church family. Hebrews 10, 25, especially what we're going through nowadays when this world is getting darker and we believe God's coming back soon. 25, let's not neglect meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord drawing near. So we see God coming back soon. This world's getting darker. It's going to be more difficult to follow Christ, right? You're going to be persecuted. And it says that with counting the costs, be willing for your family to hate you. Be willing for people to despise you. But you're doing this all for the sake of Christ. It's a joy that you're being persecuted because Jesus is whipped. Watch the passion of Christ. Jesus whipped. He was mocked. He was despised. Mm-hmm. He was rejected by men. Isaiah 53. I encourage you to read that. For all those people out there, <laughs> um, the Jewish people who say like, oh no, like it doesn't talk about that. It literally in Isaiah 53 prophesies mm-hmm. everything that had happened. And it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. So um, that accountability is so important. And so I encourage you to go back to episode 38, where we talk about church commitment with my dad, Morgan and I. And how important that is to pray and ask God, where do you want me to be? If you guys are in Tucson and you don't have a church, we encourage you guys to check out our church, Calvary Valley. Um, But also there's other Bible believing churches. We encourage you to go to a church that, you know, is Bible believing and they, they believe that the word of God is the word of God. They're not trying to add or take away to it or put in their old things or like the prophet said this or this person said this. They believe that, you know, how important it is to withhold and cherish the word of God and also walk by the spirit. Mm -hmm. But how important it is to be intimate with God alone, too. Mm -hmm. So go to church, but also your alone time, your quiet time with God, waking up every morning. This is something I don't really do, but I want to start doing Um, Ephesians 6, verse 10 putting on the full armor of God Mm -hmm. because you are going to be attacked. It's not a matter of if you are going to be attacked by the enemy. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Um, it talks about that in Ephesians six twelve, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So we're not just fighting against like liberals or leftists or all this we're fighting against an enemy who wants to steal kill, mm-hmm. and destroy he wants to take you to hell he wants you to follow him but that's why it's so important to walk by the spirit and it says putting on the full armor of god in verse 13 take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day mm-hmm. and have done and having done all to stand firm verse 14 stand therefore having fastened with the belt of truth, right? Which Mm -hmm. is the word of God, the belt of truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, the way that we can, you know, 
be in right standing with God is knowing that we're abiding, you know, we're humbling ourselves. If there's sin that creeps up, we're dealing with it. We're confessing it to people. We're getting accountability and the shoes for your feet, having put the readiness given by the gospel of peace, right? The good news, Mm -hmm. sharing that good news, walking it out, making Mm -hmm. disciples, Go therefore and make disciples, Matthew twenty eight nineteen. That's it, our mission it as really a church. It is a gospel. It peace. is a good news. Like you think of that, it it gives us peace with God. Jesus is our mediator, and now because apart from Him, we are hostile toward God. Yeah. Our sin put Him put Jesus on the cross, and our sin, you know, we we don't like the light. We try to hide naturally because we want to hide our sin. We want to do what we want to do, but that the peace of God, uh, the peace of the gospel. That's what that is. It gives us peace and restores our relationship with him. So, Amen. I'm just going to finish this and then we're going to pray, pray for you guys. But, um, verse 15, the shoes of, um, the shoes of peace. And then 16 in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, which is mm-hmm. Satan, you know, and his demons trying to attack your mind mm-hmm. with darts saying, Oh, does God really love you? Or oh, are you really saved? Oh, maybe you blaspheme the Holy spirit. And I'm telling you right now, if you're out there, a lot of people say, Oh, I maybe a blaspheme the Holy spirit. The fact that you're concerned about that, you haven't right. Mm-hmm. The, it's those people who harden their hearts who are like, no, I don't want God. No, I don't need God. I don't need it. I don't need his help. I'm a good person rejecting, rejecting until God, you know, he, he, uh, says okay, okay. Yeah. that you've you've made, made your, your choice. choice and then um 17 this is the part salvation salvation and stuff <laughs> um and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god not my word right <laughs> but the word, of god. the word of god verse 18 and this is what we should do this is how we you know continue to go through this dark world and with all the craziness pray at all times in the spirit and with all prayer and supplication, right? Crying out to God, being intimate. And you don't need like a perfect prayer, like a Catholic prayer. You just need to cry out to him like King David, like, God, I'm nothing. I need help. I don't know what mm-hmm. to do right now. Please help me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be this like, oh, put together. Like just be real and honest with God. Mm-hmm. And like King David, he was a man after God's own heart because he cried out to God. And to the to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, all right? Interceding for others. Mm-hmm. Pray for other believers, you know, in other countries, their persecution. Pray for them. And also for me, that the words may be given to me my in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, which is the good news. Mm-hmm. Verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in chains, and I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be persecuted right there. Yeah. It was persecuted, right? And we need to understand that don't ever be afraid of, oh, I thought it was going to be easy being Christian. Everything's going to be good now. Don't be like unaware of his schemes. Mm-hmm. Like he's going to attack you. Your family member, my family might reject you, might not mm-hmm. want you anymore. But in how much we love God, in comparison of how much we love God, it should seem like we're hating everyone else mm-hmm. because we love God so much. And the cool thing it also talks about, it's like, um, if you it truly says, count the cost, like think of that because people, they, you might count the cost real quick and be like, oh, what? I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to, it might cause problems with no, my family even and stuff. Then they're like, oh, I don't want that. But that's, uh, that's not fully counting the cost. That's mm-hmm. just looking at the quick external things like, oh, that's going to cause a little bit of pain. I thought this is a free gift. I thought this was just all good. And yes, it is good. But you need to cu- count the cost of eternity. This life is so short, and eternity is eternal. Forever. It's forever. So y- that is why, yeah, you can count the cost. But I'm telling you right now, it's worth it. Amen. You know, it's, it is. There's nothing that compares to it, and you. This is not something that you want to be like. Oh, s- yeah. Someone told me about that, but why didn't I choose? Like you're going for eternity. You don't want to be saying why. Why didn't I choose the right thing? Why did I count the cost and not really count the cost? You know, just look for my selfish interests, like you know, persecution and like the enemy coming against me. But God is much more powerful. You don't have to fear the enemy. You don't have to. Yes, he's going to try to come against you, but you have the full armor of God. You have the Holy Spirit. And if God is for you, who can be against Amen. you, right? 
so the devil can't take your salvation or anything Amen. like that. And don't feel like you're missing out like Morgan is saying. Trust me, this world has nothing to offer you. There's so many testimonies and stories of people saying they've tried everything. Just read what it talks about in Ecclesiastes. Solomon, mm -hmm. he tried everything. He had all the riches, all the women, everything. And yet he said it was meaningless. And at the end, those things that he got is, re remember, fear God and obey his commandments. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that matters because this is not our home. And to remind mm -hmm. you, this pain, it's this is the worst it's going to be for the Christian. But for the non-believer, right, this is the best it's going to be. And it's it's not that good. And so <laughs> I would just encourage you, don't ever feel like you're missing out. Don't ever feel like you're, you know, if you have kids and they're like, I feel like I'm missing out. I don't get to do this. And let them know this is not your home. We're living for eternity. Mm. We're just foreigners passing through. So get excited. And don't believe for the lie that, oh, I can accept God when I'm mm -mm. older or when, because you could die today. You could yep. die right you now. You don't know right? when. So that's why. Today is the day. Today, yeah, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So make sure that if if God is touching your heart right now, and I pray yeah. that he is, Amen. even those of you who have been backsliding or just kind of been complacent, that God's calling you to wake up Amen. and God's calling me to wake up. Amen. Right. All and so us. we need to make sure that we're not just playing games with God or have a, a plan of, Oh yeah, I'll accept you later. We need to do it today because we are not guaranteed another day. Amen. So now I'm going to have Morgan. He's going to pray the prayer of salvation and you guys can repeat after him. But remember too, it's not the words that save you. This isn't like, Oh, like the words are going to save you. But it's that faith in Christ, like it talks about. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And whoever draw nears to God will draw near to God mm -hmm. must believe that He exists and that He will reward those who earnestly or diligently seek Him. So that's our goal. Is like this is not just for those people because you might just see this video and like whatever. This is for people who don't know God. This is for all of us. Me and Morgan are being awakened and encouraged right now to seek God right now and to earnestly seek him that the day mm -hmm. is drawing near. We need to also encourage people. So when Morgan says this prayer, you might be like, oh, it doesn't matter. Maybe God's even calling on your heart to recommit your life. Maybe you feel like a little lukewarm right now and just to recommit your life and maybe go to a church and, you know, be baptized that outward expression of an inward faith to have people then hold you accountable. Um, and, also pray this prayer so you can also lead others because that's our job. Our main job, we feel like, what am I supposed to do on this world? I don't know my will. I don't, I can't hear the voice of God. Just read the Bible and he tells you to go there and make disciples, pour into others, love others just as Christ loves you. Like go and love others with his love. And so Morgan, do yeah. you want to? Yeah. And you it? know, I, you know, I don't like having to put the prayer of salvation and put it in a box because sometimes like Mariah said, mm -hmm. People think, oh, I prayed that. It's good. So usually I just pray. And you don't have to, if you're leading someone to Christ, you know, this is a good lesson here too. It doesn't have to be like a rote prayer that you guys read through and you're like, okay, I say this, you say that. I say this, you say that. Sometimes, like I'm going to do right now, I just pray, pray these things. And I ask the person to pray that either out loud or in their heart. And so since we're online, you guys can just pray that out loud or in your heart. I can't hear you, but God can hear you. Amen. And that's what it's about. It's not about someone hearing you. Oh, someone heard me say the prayer. Yes, it's good to it's good to tell people Amen. and it's good to be held accountable, but it's not for them. It's for God. So let's just pray right now and pray this in your heart. Even if you have backslidden or you want to recommit your life to God, uh, just pray this, and then afterward, I'm going to just pray for you to continue in that. Amen. So, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner, and I need you, Lord, as a Savior. I, I just pray, God, that you cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness. I confess, Lord, that that Jesus, you are Lord. You're not just Jesus, but you are our Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And now we have life in you. And I just pray, Father, um, I just thank you so much for receiving me into your kingdom and that I could be your son and your daughter. And I thank you, Father. Just I thank you for all the people who are praying this with me, God. I pray that you would just revive them, that they are were dead in sin, but God, you can give them life. And Lord, we... We recognize that this world 
is going, it's getting worse. We can see that clearly. We can see in your word that the world was bad. Even back when you were on this earth, things, so many bad things were happening still because of our sin, because of our flesh. And so, Lord, we just, we recognize that we need you and we just call upon you right now to, to touch our hearts and to help us to walk by the Spirit so that we will not gratify the lust and the desires of the, our flesh, God. And I just pray that you would just encourage people now that they are saved, now that they have a relationship with you, whether they're starting it right now today or whether they've been a Christian for 20, 30, 40 years, God, I thank you that we can continue to walk, we can continue to grow. And I pray, Father, for your sons and daughters to abide in the vine, that if they have been backsliding, if they have uh, been complacent, if they've been doing their own thing, that you just get a hold of their hearts once again, God. I can't, I can't make them, but God, you can speak to them. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. All those who have prayed the prayer, all those who are giving their lives to you right now, fill them with your Holy Spirit, God. Empower them to live for you all the days of their life, the rest of their days, months, years here on this earth, however many days they have here. I pray that they would be lived for you and for your kingdom, for your glory, God. And that's why we're here. We're not here for us. We're not here to build our kingdoms. We're here for you, for your glory. Amen. And so we thank you, God. Thank you for this time. I pray that your Holy Spirit would do a mighty work and that you would fill in all the blanks, all the all the things I missed, all the things that Mariah missed, all the things that we just can't cover in this time. God, please speak to them through your word. Speak to them in dreams and visions. Speak to them in their prayer time with you. And I pray, God, that they would have a sincere heart ready to take in everything that you have for them, God. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God bless the Lord. you guys. Well, I'm excited and thankful. If you prayed that prayer in faith and you meant it and now you want to walk it out and abide in Christ, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and Amen. it's an amazing day. We are so hmm excited and joyful and if you are already saved in a christian walking it you should be joyful and live a life of joy being filled mm -hmm. with spirit because so many times people see us as christians like i don't want to be a christian because look at them they're so depressed but we <laughs> should be filled with spirit it just like in theo enthusiastic mm -hmm. filled with god filled with joy and so i am thankful for you guys sometimes if you don't feel good and there's like a hard day it's okay to be honest and that's why we have our community in mm -hmm. church so they can pray for you but to put on that garment of praise, put on some worship music, mm -hmm. praise God, thank him for all he's done for you mm -hmm. and just rejoice and be glad because this is not our home. Our yeah. home's in heaven and, and eternity with him. And that's important too to what you're saying. If you did give your heart to God right now, we're just so thankful Amen. for that. And you need to get involved with the church, Amen. whether that be yep. here at Calvary or Valley or another Bible God's believing church you. and make sure that they're, they're holding to the word of God. You if you see something in the word of God that's, that they're not holding to, you know, you can even reach out to one of us, ask us, mm -hmm. you know, and we're not perfect, I know, but we need to make sure that that we're living by the word of God, mm -hmm. that we're not twisting scripture, that we're doing our best to read it in context, and that if, like Mara was talking about earlier, we need that accountability as well, and that encouragement, because this life, let's, let's be honest, this life is hard. Mm -hmm. But we have God and we have each other Amen. and we have the Holy Spirit. Yes. So so get involved because the enemy, if you pull away, if you are like, yeah, I gave my my life to Jesus. But if you are just pulling away, the devil wants to pick you off. You know, he just wants to take you away and destroy your life. And so that's why we need to make sure that we're staying abiding in Christ. And like God's word says, too, that we're coming together coming out from our homes right mm -hmm. even in the midst of covid and different things and that's why we're open we're open mm -hmm. physically so yeah. yep 
So anyway, I'm just so thankful that you guys can join us again on another episode of Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram for any of the behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Please make sure to check out our new merch down in the description below and praying that you guys have a blessed week. Amen.